and welcome to episode 61 of the Youth Squad Legends series with Wrexham. As promised, the second season in the Championship will be compacted down to a more manageable state, keeping the momentum of the series going and quickly moving us on to the Premier League. The highlights that you're about to see are quick, but I've done a great deal in terms of storytelling, so you're really not missing out on the character development. It becomes quite evident how much effort has been put into the highlight packages very quickly, so all I ask is for you to be patient in between episodes. I might need an extra day here or there. I've got my birthday coming up later in this week. I don't really want to be working around it, but I also know that there's a need for Gregson to keep on progressing and episodes like this to drop. You are going to love this episode. I am absolutely 100% confident. Oh, and Patreon members, your Add a Player and Add a Wonder Kid video, little video on the Cutsy Extra channel, will be out tonight. So check out my secondary channel if you are interested. Sit back, enjoy the next, what, about 17 minutes? Mmm. It's a good 17 minutes. The Carabao Cup fixtures allow for tactical freedom and experimentation that isn't often offered elsewhere. Still, Tramia Rovers proved to be a stubborn opponent. The 4-3-2-1 was back for a fleeting moment as my reminiscence of past seasons got the better of me. But Wrexham wouldn't have any significant output until moving to a 4-2-3-1 later in the game. The huge expectations on the 95 potential Smatov didn't seem to bother him on debut, playing in a similar style to that of Spence and Neil. Spence, if you ever hear this, I miss you. Richards was given a chance further up the field to try and find that forward we used to know, but he's long gone. The only heart in mouth moment for the defence came from this excellent long range attempt. I bet the returning Tanner was quite happy to see that one over. It was just after Tramia's brightest moment where everything started to unravel for the hosts. A red card quickly followed up by this wonderful attempt by new striker Casey Stockwood, proving to be the decider. Have some of that. With each game, I'll be awarding a singular attribute point based on the event, so that's the improvement going to stock his free kick accuracy. After the game, the invisible Peter Carrion was placed on the transfer list. Final result, Tramia nil. Rex and one. There would be no such experimentation in our next game, a mammoth championship clash with recently relegated Southampton. They had returning faces in their lineup, a much improved Philip Goodridge at the back and Bitplu on the right wing being the weak point of an otherwise world-class front line. If they keep hold of Giacomo Corona through the transfer window, I see nothing else but the Saints lifting the title come May. I gave us no chance going into this game, but an inspired Danny Bins played a blinder, wrapping up the pacey problems. Still, with all the eyes and attention on the forwards, chances did drop to Southampton's misfiring midfield. Suddenly, in the second half, it was our turn to miss gill-edged opportunities. How this one ended nil-nil, I will never know, but it was the correct result at the end of the day. This more relaxed approach to career mode gave me ample time to micromanage. By mid-August in the away game against Watford, the team team was showing signs of decent match sharpness. This night turned out to be the Victor Lestoza show, as he gave us many reasons why he's likened to Zidane, Gerard, and Kaka by the pundits. Watford did have a bite to their attack, but Tanner was on top form. Sadly, for the shaven shot stopper, the man of the match was already sealed up. This tidy 1-0 win could get the ball rolling on Wrexham's season. It's home against Preston next, and there's a new name in the Wrexham lineup. You see, as much as the fans had taken a liking to Casey Stockwood and his natural goal scoring ability, the people calling the shots upstairs were apparently not satisfied by the off ball movement provided by Giuseppe Pegararo's estranged son. So a gamble was taken on another low knee Croatian Zvezdan Kukrika. Yeah. Try saying that after a couple of pints. Standing much shorter than the regular YSL forward, Kukrika wasn't given much hope, but maybe times are changing. An early drift off to the back post prompted Cesarini to cross the ball in, 
but it was Tomoharu Ioka who applied the finish and treated supporters to a memorable goal celebration alongside. In reality, it was around the 14th minute mark where everyone began to sit up and take notice of just what kind of talent Wrexham had secured. All is well and good running in behind the last defender, but the truly special players separate themselves by doing the hard yards, such as dropping into pockets and progressing the team upfield. This free kick had Tomoharu eyeing up a brace, but it wasn't meant to be. Wrexham's momentum momentarily suffered a setback with this correct, albeit soft penalty call against Keone Sola. But when you have a penalty saving expert in the net, there's always a glimmer of hope that the spot kick isn't terminal. Even though the outfielders are taking all the credit so far this season, the performances by Tobias Tanner are more consistent to the point where they simply can't be ignored. Someone else having a notable start to their season is the now hyper-aggressive Hiro Furiaku. The already energetic midfielder has a newly found anger created by his loan out last year. The Tahitian believed he was ready for the first team 12 months back. Well, this current competition for places between himself and Balat is turning into a bit of a blowout. Kukrika's spatial awareness, gifting Soring Dari with an easy tap-in. From a footballing purist point of view, this match wouldn't be complete without a goal from the man of the match winning debutant. A ball clipped off the head of Justin Bernard gave Zviedzdan just enough of an opening to Julia oblige and send the crowd home delirious. Old Wrexham fullback Joe Espinosa completed a staggering £78 million transfer to Galatasaray on the eve of both of his previous employees meeting in the Carabao Cup. However, it was another player worth astronomical amounts that would consume the headlines. Zviedzdan Kukrika had set his sights on not only blowing Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney away, but making a huge statement to his parent club. Quality movement, agility and top finishing made it feel almost unfair on Barnsley, who've probably not experienced anything of the sort down in League One. When players are this assured in their runs, it's an absolute doddle to pick them out, even if occasionally they miss the mark. Kukrika's fourth the pick of the day, elegantly passing the ball into the bottom corner and giving Stockwood an easy assist in a game where he otherwise felt slow and cumbersome. At full time, the match ball had a new owner, and the full time scoreline read Wrexham 4, Barnsley 0. By the third match of his loan spell, the sensational Croatian forward was being marked everywhere he went, and sometimes forcibly so, no matter the consequences. Even down to 10 men for a significant portion of the game, Stoke City gave a good account of themselves, maintaining the game's lively tempo. If the Potters had managed to squeeze a goal in, they probably would have gone on to win the game. But as time ticked down, the Red Dragons took the spoils, as Stockwood's awkward animation set up a creative winner. After a couple of weeks of internal criticism about this celebration was incredibly sweet for young Casey. Deadline day was a hive of activity for Wrexham, beginning with a tasty £17.5 million from Toulouse for Chester Bruden. Jang Sung Chan admitted that the kid had talent, just no spark to warrant rejecting such a hefty sum of money. Rogers Mayanja was the next one to go. It's only temporary for now, a 12 month loan in principle, but with Wrexham completely restructuring their striker search and development to focus on smaller builds, the Ugandan is in a rather tough spot. Wrexham have two years to cough up the money Lons want for Kukrika, but there has to be a contingency plan if the deal can't be struck. Bolivian Rodrigo Titarico signing his first professional contract from the youth academy is one such backup option. Evan Huxley, who had been training as a left back, was told to completely scrap that idea, making him too a potential Kukrika alternative. This began a stunning domino effect. Dion Daniels' release clause had skyrocketed thanks to a new contract. Alan Richards had to replace Anwar Balat, who was departing for Porto. And with Gwynfer Owen already planned to step into Shaquane President's vacated role before this mess started, all of a sudden Wrexham had to fill a hole on the left of their defence. Funny how things work themselves out sometimes. Spencer Neal is back from out of nowhere, costing the club 
£27.1 million in the process. Certainly an overpayment for a player previously brandished as not game winning. But nothing can put a price on the fans' excitement. Seeing a club icon of that magnitude return from out of the blue will give supporters that feel good factor. Quickly running through the other ongoings, Peter Carrion finally said goodbye for £1.2 million. Preston parted ways with £5 million to sign Randolph Celestine. Peter Kalua joined Titarico in transitioning to the first team. Con Hunter was not sold but loaned out to Everton. Huxley was loaned out to develop his centre forward qualities at Blackburn, who interestingly are the team we face next. Next, despite desperate attempts to find a suitor, Paul Kieran Bamford missed out on a move, so one would expect that his next few months will be quite boring, waiting for the winter window to open up. Finally, giving a secondary option on the right this season for Wrexham is Albanian Teddy Lala. Great name, but if early signs are to be believed, not a great footballer. With the squad finalised for a few months, let's plough through these championship games. Blackburn hilariously still had Adam Wharton in their midfield, the England selection hoping for Euro 2024 glory in real life is not faring as well in the YSL timeline. Much like everybody else in the championship, he's getting bullied by Victor Lestoza. I mean, who's actually surprised? When the South American stands alongside Ben Smacker in the transfer cutscenes, it really hits home how much of a physical freak he is. The now customary Danny Bin's goal for the season was a belter this time around if you ignore the comical defensive deflection. True scenes of Lim Bai. An on-point TT has brought a new level of calmness to proceedings. Vital saves at crucial moments allow Wrexham to be in more winning positions overall. Zviedzdan Kukrika profiting from Rover's push for an equaliser. That second goal proved to be the match winner, as Blackburn finally broke through the high-quality North Welsh defence. But an attempt to rescue a point was futile. The full-time whistle was met with slight relief from the Acton Park faithful. Inexperienced Wrexham of last season might have forfeited that lead late on. Sadly, it's not all sunshine and rainbows in the team. Ben Smacker is in the driest goal-scoring patch of his entire career. The Hungarian seems to be doing everything right, but for one reason or another, the look is not there for him. That slump in form is only compounded by Justin Bernard's sizzling start to life with the Red Dragons. Edda Ojeda dropping a disaster class against his former team, struggling to cope with the now infamous Kukrika movement. Coventry had thought they'd got themselves back into the match a few moments later, only for the assistance flag to put a stop to any celebrations. That disallowed goal seemed to galvanise the home team, who did end the first half much stronger. Ellis Sims will be scratching his head for many days to come, as Tanner somehow miraculously got enough on this fearsome goal-bound attempt. Jang Sung Chan must have been quietly confident at half-time, as he gave professional debuts to academy graduates Kalua and Titarico. The latter pouncing on yet another Ojeda mistake, to score his first ever goal for his beloved club. As time wound down, Zviedzdan became creator to Belgian Bernard's brace. Bench Bent's bewildered as pressure on his position is now completely overwhelming. In the next game at home against Ipswich, the fans had got what they'd asked for. Bench Mac a fit, but not selected for the first time in an eternity. But it's not like Wrexham don't need that skill set in the team. Kukrika emulating the Maka magic to skip free and earn his side an early penalty. Victor Lestoza, perfect from the spot, as he always is. Croatian starlet Kukrika tore into Ipswich through the first half. The 75 overall Raymond King absolutely blown away in the Ipswich defence, helplessly seeing this delightful chip nestle into the side netting to double Wrexham's lead. The Jamaican centre-back went on record after the match saying he's never seen anything like it. But maybe we should be more in disbelief of what's happening in between the sticks. All the patience is paying off with Tobias, who's having the most wonderful of seasons so far. Inform goalkeepers are a blessing. But when the ball is struck as sweetly as this effort by Jack Taylor, there's very little 
that can be done. A quiet stint by Bernard had Bent's eager to impress when he came on after 60 minutes. But the bad luck spell would continue, robbing the ball, strong in the tackle, playing a beautiful splitting pass just for it to be called offside. Ouch. With Wrexham struggling to shut down the game, it was inevitable that the visitors would get a chance to level the scoreline up. Tobias Tanner had other ideas. It seems like he took the player failure last season quite personally. Another win under their belts, Wrexham after nine games had reached the summit of the championship. But as the saying goes, the bigger they are the harder they fall. And who better to set the stumbling blocks than Pompey's patron wonderkid, Eugenio Vera. Even without his partner in crime striker Pietro Musa, who had moved on to pastures new, Vera was as close to unplayable as they come, setting up both goals in a 2-1 victory for the South Coast side. The only bright spark for Exxon was this Bernard cutback to Zvezdan Kukrika, masterfully dispatched. Despite the world-class finish, the game was all about Portsmouth's wondrous Spaniard, who made red-shirted stalwarts like Keone Sola look a bit amateurish when all is considered. Sticking to the South Coast theme, Portsmouth's rivals, Southampton, were in town for the Carabao Cup. Deadlocked earlier in the season, both teams were probably treating this game more seriously than your normal early round cup tie. A goal scored would bolster paper-thin confidence on shooting ability and a win would give victors a mental upper hand for the rest of the campaign. Maka looked sharp early doors brushing off those stale cobwebs, but Southampton were on the front foot for large spells. Marita missing not one, but two big chances. A superb outing by TT paired with a wonderful substitute's appearance by Danny Bins kept things close. Repositioned, Gwynford Owen was revelling in centre-back, putting everything on the line with some full-blooded committed slides in. Unfortunately for the home side, this became an unnecessary talking point, as the referee had clearly woken up on the wrong side of the bed. Owen's first penalty conceding foul was bizarre. The tackle looked rather clean, but it only led to some fans muttering under their breath. Tobias stepped up to save the spot kick and turn feelings of anger into ecstasy, albeit temporarily. Somehow, this inch-perfect block gave Southampton another chance from 12 yards. The quiet mumblings of fans turned very quickly, very loudly, into shouts berating the referee. In this day and age, we are told time and time again to respect the referee's calls. But how can you even start defending the indefensible? It's quite easy to sympathise with players and fans alike in these situations, but the throwing of coins and lighters at full time is never a good look. The referee had a very poor game, but focus will be on the crowd disruption instead and the result of Wrexham's ongoing investigations. If these two teams are to battle it out this season, it's first blood drawn by the Saints. All right, this has been Cutsy. Thank you ever so much for watching this episode of Youth Squad Legends. Tell me what you think about this quicker format down in the comment section. I did have a whale of a time doing this. It was a change of pace. Nice to play some Youth Squad Legends games like at 2 a.m. in the morning, but an excruciating amount of work on top of that, especially on the scripting side. Give the video a like if I've entertained you. If you haven't subscribed around here yet, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> Hit the red box down below, bell icon, you know the gist by now. Big thanks to everybody supporting me financially on Patreon. Top-notch people over there. You can join them too with the link down in the description box. I hope I've shown everyone over the last couple of episodes just how committed I am to this series. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.